listen, this is your time. Gather around your devices with your parents because there's something that all of us have to do, children and parents. Because I have our children's corner. The sound, we don't have. Niggas, we don't have the sound. We look forward to hear your lovely voice. Sing it for us. We have our song, Nicholas. Oh, we keep a little hands to watch we do. Come on, we have to sing that one together. You're not ready for that song. Let's sing that one together. Okay, let's go. One, two. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do. For the Father up above, he is looking down with love. So be careful, little hands, what you do. Good. This evening, the, the children's corner is entitled The Common House Fly. So this is what we're going to do. The parents, is, is a question and answer. So the parents are going to answer for the children after I read the story. And the pair that get the most answers right, that child will get the gift. I hope you all understand that. It's a question and answer time. So you have to listen carefully, both parents and children. Maybe your mom has reminded you not to leave food lying around. And maybe she's told you to wash your dishes immediately after a meal and to clean up the yard where your dog stays. There's a good reason for this. You don't want to attract how flies, one of the world's most worst pets. The insects probably spread more disease than any other creatures. Losing their mouth, flies suck up moisture as they crawl on rotten food, decaying animals, or animals dropping. They can even taste with their feet. I bet you already know that. Because they can't chew food, they, because they can't chew food, their most relief saliva to liquefy any solid food. When dining, flies gently release some of them, their precious meal on whatever they're eating. This is how they pass on disease. You may have seen flies washing their hands. They wash their hands too. Though they're constantly grooming themselves, they may carry up to a million bacteria some of which they leave on everything they touch. You know you should wash your hands and keep flies off your food, but when Israel, Israel, when Israel, Isaiah said, wash and make yourself clean, he was talking about keeping your, cleaning your hearts. He understand that sin spread like a disease and must be controlled. So ask God to help you stay away, say no to Satan and temptations, and clean yourself and keep yourself clean unto God. So let's go now, parents, unmute your mic, and I have some questions for you to answer. The first one is what was the name of the story? This is for our parents to answer. What was the name of the story? Housefly. Yes, the honest housefly. Who's that? We get the name. That's Katrina. Yes. Okay, you so score five points so far. The next question: What do your mom to always tell you to do after every meal? Cover down the food. I'm listening. After, after every, every meal, you must do what? After every meal, cover cover over the food or wash your hands. I no, thought it was clean the food. I mean, clean the ear. No, wash the what? After yourself. Wash no. the plate. This is. Yes, wash the dishes. Was that? Ashley. Ashley, that's fine for Ashley. The story said that flies can taste with their, with what part of their body? Their, their feet. feet. That is a that is a toy for you for that per <laughs> that's Nicholas? Roshan. Roshan, fight for Roshan, yeah, fight for Ashley. 
Floyd groomed himself by doing what? He didn't know that Floyd can do this, you know? What it was? Mm. Wash, Wash their hands. That's washing again? Yes. I for washing again. How does same spread? They vomit on the food. Spread like a. We hear it all the time. We have one going on. Going on. Like yes. A like, a dish, like a, yes. Who's that again? Ashley. Ashley again. You all in lead. The last one. You need to get this last one now. What part of your body that God wants you to keep clean? My heart. Your heart. Who got that? Me. Roshan. Roshan. Oh, we actually thought Roshan is a winner. Thank you very much for participating, children. That was very well. Remember to uh, wash your hands and make sure you keep your whole body clean, which include the heart. Thank you very much. We now have our we now have our youth featured now by Katrina Bashaw. Yes, Katrina? Yes, youth, we're ready for you. You can come forward. We know that we have persons writing to you. They care about you, so they're writing to give you advice. And I am sure that everybody will benefit from this advice. So I'm asking, especially the youth to come forward, though I know they have a lot to learn. And so I'm inviting them forward. Are we ready with the PowerPoint as well? Are we giving, right. So the youth, I hope you are there and you're ready to go. Dear younger me, planning for your future financial security is more important than you think. While you are living at home, save as much money as you possibly can. Remember the ants? Auntie Margaret has talked about flies. This time we're gonna talk a little bit about ants. Remember the ants? In Proverbs chapter six, verse six, Solomon told us to consider their ways and be wise. I mean, if the ants can be wise, so can you, so listen up. They gather food while it is plentiful and store it up for later use. This COVID-19 situation sure showed a lot of people that having something in store is very important. Never mind that the ants already have food in their um, cupboards as soon as you drop something on the ground, they're on it. They sure have a strong sense of smell. You never know what financial struggles or difficulties are up ahead. And I'm sure the ants will tell you that if they can talk. So don't use up all your money simply because right now you have it to spare. Financial obligations will come fast and furious when you're on your own, especially if you have a family. You will need to manage your finances or they will manage you. Then, before you know it, you are in debt all over the place and this does not have to be. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 8 says, the borrower is servant to the lender. And Romans chapter 13 verse 8, Paul, in, in Romans chapter 13 verse 8, Paul encourages us to owe no man anything but love. Remember, as much as possible, manage your money well so you can avoid debt. So here's another piece of advice. Be like the wise, industrious servants who receive the two and five talents from their Lord. Explore investments, younger self. When you do, do not jump at the first option you learn about simply because it looks pretty. All that glitters is not gold. It might just be gold-plated or plain old fake, a scam. Learn how to make informed decisions with your money. You must seek out trustworthy, successful persons for guidance or speak to persons within the financial sector. Talk to various persons. Talking to various persons will broaden your knowledge base. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14 says, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You must broaden your investments as well. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 says, Give a portion to seven and also to eight, 
for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. In other words, don't put all your eggs in one basket. If one basket gets knocked over in the wind, maybe a hurricane, the other eggs will be safe and sound. Here's another piece of advice. Do more service for the Lord. When you earn on your investments, bless your fellow men. Trust me, it will be worth it. God will bless you in ways that you cannot even begin to imagine. Your relationship with him will also become stronger. Don't be like the rich young ruler. Boy, I sure hope that he repented of his decision to walk away from Jesus. But if he didn't, he missed out on eternal riches in heaven because he did not want to give to the poor. If God had not given to him, how would he have gotten? He forgot that all is the Lord's in the first place. James chapter one, verse 17 says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights. When sending out his disciples, Jesus told them freely they have received, so they must freely give. You also being one of Jesus' disciples must do the same. Your good works will lead others to God. I've left this for last, but this is probably the most important of all your financial decisions. Be faithful to God in all that you earn. Return his tithe. Malachi chapter three, verse nine says, if you don't, you will receive a curse. And verse 10 says that if you do, the Lord of hosts will open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room to receive it. He asks you to prove him on it. So do such. The blessing may not be riches. I know that we would all like that. But Mark chapter 10 verse 25 says that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Younger self, it may seem strange, but many a time, poverty is a blessing. Your blessing may also be a better day-to-day -day close connection with God. It may be the joy of helping others in need. It may simply be that perfect piece of knowing that you are doing God's will. Of course, you will always have your needs taken care of. Matthew chapter 6 verse 32 tells us that our Father knows of all our needs. And remember, in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, he has promised to supply them all according to his, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So you, we hope you have taken in that financial advice. It's very important and I'm sure it will take you through life without too many bumps. Thank you for joining. Good evening, brothers and sisters. It's a joy to have you worshiping with us this evening. A few announcements. We will continue with the prophecy series on Wednesday evening at 7.30. The Thursday evening session begins at 7.30. The topic is the new norm, the challenge with online teaching. There'll be a representative from the Bridgetown Seventh-day Adventist Primary School, and also a representative from the Barbados Seventh-day Adventist Secondary School. Our presenter for this evening is Pastor David Beckles. Pastor Beckles began the series yesterday, and I'm sure that all of you were blessed. He will continue this evening, and I want to welcome Pastor David Beckles and his wife to the St. Thomas District once again. I pray that God will continue to bless his ministry. Thank you.
Well, let me say good evening to everyone. Thank you, Pastor, for giving me the privilege to fellowship and to worship with you one more time. Um, this evening, I just want to continue where we left off yesterday. Um, we'd like to share. Can we share um, the screen? Share our presentation? Yes, go right ahead. Okay. Right. Um, with the, 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 the work we like to do in the sessions, I understand it's so important that we take time to lay some foundation pillars um, so that moving on away from here, it's easier to explain and to understand um, the principles and concepts and messages that God has prepared for us, for his people. I um, mean, the two books we spoke about yesterday, yeah, the whole Bible, as we indicated yesterday, um, why is prophecy centers in the books of Daniel and Revelation? Um, these two books have to be explained in collaboration with all the other books of the Bible because it's one whole message from Genesis to Revelation that we have to understand and share. So we have a word of prayer, and today we want to look at our Second presentation, um, introduction to the book of Daniel. And would you say a word of prayer for us? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your blessings towards us throughout the past day. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to come and study your word together. Send your Holy Spirit now to speak to our hearts and may each word inspire us to be better witnesses, better Christians, and be ready to meet you when you come again. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I thought we'd just um, start by opening the book of Daniel. And um, from there, we can travel the whole journey. Yeah? Uh, there's the possibility of a nuclear annihilation Friday. you. People are concerned how this world will end. Are you fearful that the world is on the countdown to the battle of Armageddon? These are the kinds of things we hear on the road. Um, are we headed towards some cosmic conflict straight out of Star Wars? Um, questions the world needs answers to. What does the future hold for our world, for our planet? And especially now in the time of COVID-19, people are concerned, people are asking questions, they're all a host of theories out there and explanations out there about prophecy as it relates to this pandemic, some that are pretty confusing. Have you at any point attempted to understand the prophecy of Daniel and Revelation but have been confused by all the symbolism of those prophecies? Um, the symbols are real. In prophecy, God has provided ways of communicating his truth um, to his people, mm -hmm. and there's a reason for them. Yes. Um, uh, I understand why some people become very concerned about the symbols. Um, it's not a big problem, as you will discover as we move on from here. There are three basic premises that must control our study of prophecy. The first one is this, the prophetic symbols in both the book of Daniel and Revelation must be interpreted by the Bible itself. I think you would have noticed each time we have some big catastrophe, some global issue, um, persons immediately rush in, whether it's 9-11 or the, 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 the pandemic we're dealing with or some of the other natural disasters, people rush in and try to give their own explanations. But we understand if you will have the true meaning of the message that my God is trying to share with us through prophecy, we must let the Bible, every symbol in the Bible has to be interpreted by the word of God itself. Secondly, um, the main focus of our study of prophecy must be preparation needed for the end time. Uh, we just don't study prophecy for argument and debate. And um, you have seen some prophecy schools established right here in Orlando. And when people are finished studying in prophecy school, they leave the church. 
They believe that something is wrong with the church and wrong with Adventism, uh, and they become very angry and disappear. That's a problem. Um, certainly, that's not the kind of preparation we're looking for. Thirdly, if prophecy is going to make sense, we understand that it has to be understood correctly only as it centers in and uplift Jesus Christ. Yes. Um, uh, the prophetic books, um, both Daniel and Revelation, the whole Bible, um, is the, the message of these books are centered in Jesus Christ. In Daniel chapter 1, and just take time and do an overview, share a few thoughts to open up our minds um, this evening. Daniel chapter 1 shows, although in a limited and imperfect way, that Daniel's experience is analogous to that of Christ, yes. who left heaven to live in this sinful world and confront the powers of darkness. Mm -hmm. That was the experience of Daniel in Babylon. Daniel and his companions are endowed from above with Christ-like wisdom to face the challenges of the Babylonian culture. And I understand that this has significant meaning for us today. Um, uh, we'll see how the book of Daniel is configured. There's history, there's prophecy. We're looking at some stories that are very, very powerful, not just bedtime stories, but stories that are preparing us for the end time. Daniel chapter two describes the figure of the end time eschatological stone. I believe as Bible scholars, we study Daniel two, we see that stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands, striking that huge image and causing it to become dust. We understand that this stone is to indicate to us that the kingdom of Christ will eventually replace all the kingdoms of the world. So there is coming a day now when there will be no more China and America and Europe. My God has put in place a plan um, to save us from all these troubles, all the war and the pandemics and other issues. And uh, we will discover as we study prophecy that this moment is not far away. Yes. Daniel chapter three mm -hmm. reveals Christ walking with his faithful servants within the furnace of fire. And come on saints, yes. I think for us in 2020, mm -hmm. this is encouraging news. True. My God is still the fourth man, yes. still walking with his children. Amen. Especially as we go through this pandemic. You know, we leave home to go to the supermarket, but I want to let you know, my God walks with us. True. You go to the, wherever you go to do business, you have all your masks, but more important than the mass is the fourth man, yes. the son of God himself, mm -hmm. who is protecting his people in these end times, just like he protected Daniel and his friends uh, back there in Babylon. In Daniel chapter four, um, it shows God removing Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. from his kingdom for a period so that the king could understand that, that heaven, heaven rules. rules. Understand what? That heaven rules. And that is so important. There's this great controversy going on. Seems as though the devil is having his way. But prophecy helps us to understand that my God, God is in charge. charge. Yes. Not Putin, not Trump, not Z, not any of these powerful leaders. My God is still in charge. In Daniel chapter 4, the expression heaven rules reminds us that Christ, the Son of Man, Christ, the Son of God, mm -hmm. receives dominion and the kingdom as we will discover in Daniel chapter 7. In Daniel chapter 5, here we see the demise of King Belshazzar and the fall of Babylon mm -hmm. to the Persians during a night of rev revelry and debauchery. So sometimes we see our world going down strange places, people practicing all kinds of sin and wickedness. 
and the God of heaven, I mean, is no longer glorified. And it seems as though the enemy is now in charge. But I understand all those who decide not to make Christ center of their lives will one day have a Belshazzar experience. We thank God for the blessed hope. Yes. We thank God for thank the you. plan of salvation. Amen. We thank God for the Christian life and sure. for our ability to serve him in spirit Amen. and in truth. Notice in Daniel chapter 5, here we see the, the defeat of Satan um, following from what we just pointed out. Um, uh, and, and not just defeat, but the total obliteration of all that he has done and also of modern Babylon. Ancient Babylon had its defeat. But we understand modern Babylon will also be taken down. The Bible tells us in Revelation 40 that Babylon has it's fallen. fallen. Yes. And I understand uh, today God through the prophetic message is calling his people to come out of Babylon and to worship the true and living God. Amen. To honor him, to respect him, to love him. And those of us who have to teach this to the world we have to make sure that we are standing in the holy place as well. In Daniel 6, um, uh, it shows the plot against Daniel, you know, in ways that resemble the false accusations voiced against Jesus himself by the chief priests. Moreover, as King Darius, we see when he recognized that Daniel was in trouble, he unsuccessfully tries to spear Daniel. Just like Pilate tried to set Jesus free. But we understand there is a time when God takes, takes over. over yes. And um, Darius could not have saved Daniel, God. but God did, did it. it. Jesus was there to shut the lion's mouth. Amen. And notice all of these chapters are helping us to understand the great controversy that's going on right now in the end time. These same controversies, this great controversy that's been going on between Christ and Satan for years, continue. Amen. And it, we keep indicating it has to do a lot about worship and obedience. In Daniel 2, we saw the devil literally setting up a situation where those who made a decision to worship the true God was going to lose their lives. Those who refused to bow down to the image that Nebuchadnezzar set up would have been, you know, were punished, were cast into the furnace. In Daniel 6, um, the, 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 here we see a powerful king, along with his lords and officials in the kingdom, has put in the decree to prevent Daniel from worshiping the God that he knew he should serve. But as in Daniel 2, you notice those young men took their stand with Christ. Yes. In Daniel chapter 6, you notice Daniel took his stand. In these last days, we. I understand we will have to do the same. Yes. Yes. What happened in Daniel, the book of Daniel, what happened in Babylon is about to happen again. And God allows these stories to be recorded to give us hope. Somebody amen. say amen. Amen. Help us to understand we will not have to stand in these testing times alone, but my God will be there to shut the land's mouth, to take us through the burning first furnace, to be there whenever yes. we will need him. Amen. In Daniel chapter 7, um, here Christ is depicted as the son of man receiving the kingdom and reigning over his people. Daniel 8 shows Christ as, as high priest of the heavenly in the heavenly sanctuary. Amen. And uh, we move on to Daniel chapter 9, where Christ is, is literally portrayed as the sacrificial victim whose death reconfirms the covenant between God and his people. Amen. And um, these are chapters that give us hope. Yes. We Amen. know that, you know, there is a lot to take place in the, the, the years and days and months and weeks ahead, 
But we understand that God has already put in place a plan to rescue, to protect, to deliver, to save, and to keep his people safe. In Daniel chapters 10 to 12, those are the final chapters of the book. Here, Jesus Christ as Michael, our commander in chief, who fights the forces of evil and victoriously rescues God's people. Come on, saints. Even from the power of death. Yes. And um, we read in Daniel 12, but Michael standing up. Somebody say amen. amen. When the devil comes after God's people with a passion, Michael will stand up. Let my church say amen. amen. And I want to let you know he's standing up tonight. He's going to stand yes. up because we are already in the end time. Mm -hmm. We are not alone in this battle. So let us bear in mind uh, as we study over the weeks, so, uh, you, as you go through the books on your own, what we will do in church, that Christ is central to the book of Daniel. Yes. He is also central to the book of Revelation. Wherever there's prophecy, there is Jesus. Amen. As a matter of fact, the book of Revelation is not the revelation of John. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. He is the one talking to us, mm -hmm. preparing us for what is about to take place. Mm -hmm. Let us bear in mind that, you know, in every chapter of the book of Daniel, there's some experience, there's some idea that points to Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, our Protector, our Friend, our Savior, our Provider, the one who keeps us, protects us, saves us, and I understand anything else we need, uh, he is willing to provide. The study of prophecy, as I understand it, Christian friends tonight, is designed to go beyond just sharing head knowledge about these two books. You can know all the dates, you can know all the symbols, you can know all that there is to know about prophecy, if it's only that knowledge you have, you've fallen short. Mm -hmm. I understand the study of prophecy um, has been designed by God um, uh, and the working, that through the working of his Holy Spirit, sorry, um, uh, he wants to lead every one of us into a living relationship Jesus. with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's God's desire. We just don't study prophecy to debate with other people. True. Once we begin to get into these books, something is going to happen in your life. You can't remain the same. Mm -hmm. You can't see what is about to take place mm -hmm. and don't want to study and don't want to pray and don't want to attend worship and don't want to revive your family altar. Once you understand prophecy, we understand that we are now living in our day of atonement. We understand that Jesus is right now in the heavenly sanctuary. And, you know, we read in Daniel chapter 7, where God gave command to the angels who were to destroy this earth. He told them to hold back the winds of strife so that he could have some time to do what? To seal his people. So to us, this is a very important message. In the Old Testament, there was this day of atonement when the high priest went into the most holy place and there to make atonement for the sanctuary and for the people. That day, God told Israel, don't go to work. You need to stay at home. This is a holy day, a day to afflict your soul, a day to make sure that when the priest completed his work in the most holy place, your sins would be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Today, Christian friends, we are living in the time, as it were, of our day of atonement. Jesus was in that sanctuary from 1844. And the Bible tells us he asked the angels to hold back because it seems as though he recognized that his people were not ready for judgment, were not ready to be sealed. And I understand we must not take this quiet time for granted. God has keep have allowed there, there to be peace in this land 
even though you know as we can't go to our churches thank god we can still worship Amen. and um as we see the pandemics and the unnatural disasters and all the troubles in the land we understand uh, his coming is near and we must be prepared amen. somebody say amen um uh, let me just open up quickly a few important bits and pieces after that little preview um uh, as it relates to the book of Daniel and um, some foundation pillars that will help us to be able to move on from here. Who is the author of the book of Daniel? I think the message is clear. As we study the Bible, know carefully, God is not talking to the author. He said, but double oh, Daniel, yeah. shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Uh, that's very important. The message of the book of Daniel is for the end time. Yes. Have we gone there yet? We are right in that end time. Mm -hmm. And I understand it is a message for us. And that's why we are encouraged to take some time, friends, to study what's written here. In verse 9 of Daniel 12, notice God speaking, Jesus speaking to his son. He says, and he said, go thy way, Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed the till the time of the of end. The end. Mm -hmm. So Daniel is the one who God used. There's one chapter in the book that was not written by Daniel. That's chapter four, where Nebuchadnezzar is literally giving his testimony of God's goodness to him. But the rest of the book was written by Daniel. As you can see, Daniel is not just saying things he heard somebody said. Daniel is recording experiences that he was witness to. Yes. The, the things in the book of Daniel, the chapters from chapter one, coming right through to the visions, the prophetic visions, Daniel was there. He experienced, he saw, he witnessed, and he recorded for us. Let the church say amen. amen. And, and you notice know one of the things that helps us to understand the core of the book, we saw Jesus himself. When we're talking about the destruction of Jerusalem, we heard him referring to the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. He told his disciples that when they shall see the abomination of desolation, mm -hmm. spoken of by who? Daniel the by, prophet. That's why he told them, stand mm -hmm. in the holy the place. place. For we have let them understand. Remember the, the message well. If you want the house stop, don't go back inside the house because there's trouble lurking there. If you're in the field, don't come back in to change, run for your life because the Romans were there ready to destroy. So the message of Daniel is important, it's powerful because the Jews did not take Daniel's message in AD 70. Listen, friend, there was blood flowing through that temple like a flood. The temple of Jerusalem was destroyed. The people could have escaped, but they did not because they did not take Daniel's message seriously. And today, if we don't take the messages that are there for us, the warnings, the counsels that God has revealed, we can also find ourselves in very serious problems. When was the book of Daniel written? In Daniel 1 and 1, the Bible tells us, in which year? The third year. Uh, of the reign of the king Jehoiakim. Mm -hmm. So we, we get an idea of when the book was written. We go back and we look at the reign of Jehoiakim and discover that Jehoiakim's third regal year lasted by the Jewish calendar from the autumn of 606 to the autumn of 605. So we know that the book of Daniel BC. was right BC. The book of Daniel was written between 606 605. BC. And we have the setting of the book of Daniel, a very interesting way to start a book that is designed to give us the assurance of victory and deliverance. In chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible tells us that King Nebuchadnezzar shows up yes. and he takes the king captive takes the people of Israel captive. And, um, you know, as you read this, I, 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 the book begins the very negative way. 
But interesting, we're told the book begins with God's people being taken captive by, by, by who? By a heathen, a heathen king. king, and it can't get any worse. Mm -hmm. But why were they taken? Because they were disobedient. They were taken because of their disobedience. And, um, you know, this is a matter that we can say a little more about. It would have seemed as though God's people were being defeated, but my God took that negative experience. God took his people to Babylon, and we saw what God was able to do, take what looked negative and turn it around to be a blessing to the whole earth. Amen. Somebody say amen. We saw God being glorified because of the faithfulness of Daniel and his friends, uh, because these boys stood up for what they believe, because these boys invested time and, I mean, quality time in developing a relationship with God, even in a strange place, my God was able to use them in marvelous Amen. ways. Kings had to bow down Amen. and confess that the king of heaven, the God of heaven, was the true God. Amen. We saw Nebuchadnezzar commanding all the people across the whole earth um, to pay attention to the God of Daniel. Yes. We saw other leaders making the same pronouncements. So listen, friends, even in our lives, God can take what looked like a bad situation and turn it into a mighty blessing. Yes. I don't know what you're going through now, but you understand all things work together for good, good to them that love the Lord. Amen. Sometimes you have to allow some serious situations to wake us up and bring us to our senses. But even when God allows trouble, he does not leave us to deal with it alone. True. He stands by us. Somebody say amen. Mm -hmm. And for this, we got to give God some thanks. To what event then does the book of Daniel point? As we study, as we study, to which time? To the time of And the that's end. correct. The book of Daniel points us to the time of the end. end. And the big question is, are we there yet? <laughs> we can always. We are right, right in the midst of it. Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. We are here. We are here. We have arrived. And I understand uh, that if the book is for the end time, it's and we us. are in the end time. It's for us. I conclude this evening that the prophecies of the book of Daniel are for us, for me, for you, my friend. And I want to encourage you. I mean, if you never took time to study this, these books before, take some time, my friend. Mm -hmm. Even though you think you understand it, take more time, my friend, because there's so much to learn to prepare us for the next pandemic, for the next big issue, there's a lot to take place. What are the two parts of the book of Daniel? Daniel is divided into two separate parts. What well, the first part is historical part has to do with the that's the historical right. section of the book, mm -hmm. and um, it deals with the first six chapters. chapters. Um, uh, here it tells us what. Stories about Daniel's day. Stories that happened in Daniel's day. And by the way, I think for years, many, many, many Christians and storytellers have taken these. These are really good stories that helps us to understand God's love and power and wisdom. But they're more than bedtime stories. No. Everything that happened in these six chapters are about to take place again. True. What God did was to allow these chapters to be recorded so that when trouble begins to reign on this earth, when God's people are, are brought to the mountain, mm -hmm. we know just like my God was in the, that furnace waiting to receive his sons, just like my God was in the lion's den waiting to receive Daniel, my God today in 2020, he is on the lookout. Somebody amen, say amen. amen. He is there ready to protect, True. ready to guide, ready, ready to save, ready. ready. Come on, saints. I believe already yes. this week, some of you have seen him. Yes. The effects of COVID-19 are going to be real. True. And I believe there's some of us who, like Daniel, will have to go back from this shutdown, back to normal life, 
knowing that God is on our side, knowing that God will provide. Somebody say, man, maybe right now you might be worrying about how you will be fed, or how you're going to pay your rent, or how you're going to deal with all these other financial issues. But my God said, our bread and water in the time of trouble will be sure. Amen. Whatever we need, uh, my God That's shall perfect. supply. He will provide. Let my church say amen. The second part of Daniel deals with the what? Prophetic the prophecies books. of the end times. That's chapter 7 to 12. Chapter 7 to 12. And um, these prophecies, we will be paying a lot of attention to. Well, we can't do it in two sessions, but I sincerely hope that you will take time and revisit these things because they are so important. How important then is prophecy? Uh, the Bible tells us in 2 Peter, or passage for meditation, sure, come on now, we have a what? A sure word of prophecy. Uh -huh. Where unto, where unto he do well that he take heed as a light that shineth in a dark place uh -huh. unto the day dawn and the day star arise in your, in your heart. So, you know, the beginning of that passage, that verse makes a very important point. It says we have also what kind of a, a word? A sure a word. More sure a word. more sure word. Why you understand about that? Everything that has been prophesied in the book of Daniel is going to take place. Yes. My God said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. We don't have all the timelines, but we understand uh, from all the signals and all the evidence we have, all the prophetic prophecies that are being fulfilled, uh, we know that we are literally standing, uh, standing, brothers and sisters, on the banks of the Jordan, ready to be taken home. Um, uh, we go back to the Old Testament and uh, we, we, we study the prophecies that were there about Jesus. And you notice that every prophecy about Christ has been fulfilled on time. Yes. And I understand he was born on time. He was crucified on time. Come on, saints. Mm -hmm. Everything about his life and ministry on time. Mm -hmm. The place he was to be born was, you know, just as the Bible predicted. It will be no different about the second coming. All the prophecies about the second coming, about the millennium, about the judgment, about what's going on in the sanctuary right now, these things are real. They are happening. And one of these days, we will discover how they have impacted us. My prayer is that the impact will always be positive. Somebody say amen. amen. And that we will be on the right side with him um, for victory. How do we interpret the book of Daniel? Um, in an overview, I think it's important to get the picture. Um, uh, Daniel chapter 2 gives us this broad outline of human history from Daniel's time to our Already. day. Yes. And how God did that with the huge image. image yes. You know, where he showed Nebuchadnezzar. An image ahead of gold representing Babylon. That's where it all got started. And then from the head of gold to the arms and breasts of silver and the belly and tie of brass and the legs of iron and the feet, iron and clay. You know the prophecy well. And uh, what we have seen, just like God predicted, told Babylon, told the Nebuchadnezzar, you're not going to be king forever. Your kingdom will fall. Mm -hmm. and, they, and you know, I always say, if we were living in Babylon, we can say we have time. Mm -hmm. If we were in Middle Persia, we can say we have time. Mm -hmm. But we have seen time gradually give way until today, as I've heard many preachers say, yeah, we are now living in the toenails of time. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, in the days of a divided Rome, in the days of this continent we call Europe that the Bible says is made up of many countries mm -hmm. that will never cleave together. They will never be another world power. Sure. God says in the days of these kings Jesus is coming back. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand for us, that's a serious prophecy that is saying to every one of us who are listening tonight brethren, we don't have a lot of time. 
And to add to the fact um, that we're in the toenails of time, um, for many of us, you know, time is about our years too. I, I wish I could tell somebody I have another year or month or week. Today we're here and tomorrow we're gone. We look at COVID-19 and discover that tens of thousands of people in the past few weeks have been snatched. And some more people have been snatched as well. If it's not earthquake, it is flood, it's tornado, you name it, it's, it's pandemic. But the day I die, Jesus has come. The day I die, my probation closes. And that's why we need uh, to take note. So we're saying God has given this broad line of time to help us to understand where we are at in 2020. In Daniel 7, we continue with the prophecies. And here, what God does, he goes back over the same time period, starting from Babylon again. Yes. Only yes. this time he uses some different, different symbols. symbols. Yeah. We had the image in Daniel 2, but in Daniel 7, my yeah, God so used beast. some beasts, mm -hmm. you know, to take us through that time period. And at the end of the presentation, there's an emphasis in the Daniel 2, um, that time period ended with heavy emphasis on the second coming of Christ. In Daniel 7, at the end of that prophecy, God speaks very powerfully about that little horn power that is about to bring great trouble upon the world. That's highlighted strongly there. And note carefully, God keeps highlighting. Daniel 8 and 9, it covers the same ground again. Why is God repeating? God wants us not to forget where we are at yes, in this on, on this on this timeline. Mm -hmm. God wants us to know that this prophecy that was given to Daniel, um, given to Nebuchadnezzar, um, it stands. You know, the other prophecies does not change what Daniel 2 says. Daniel 8 does not change what Daniel 7 says. The Bible is consistent. God again goes over that ground, taking us, you know, from the beginning back down to the end of time. And the emphasis in Daniel 8 and 9 is the heavenly sanctuary. Um, a prophecy, um, a, a, a message that the world does not understand, but thank God uh, those who study the prophecies, we know that right now, my Jesus is in the, the Holy, Holy of Holies. Holies. Yes. Somebody say amen. Making an, make an atonement for us. And we understand he was there from 1844, over 170 something years. You know, making provision to get us ready. We refer to this period of time as the what? The investigative yeah, judgment. judgment. Yeah. Because we understand God is making up his books. So that when he comes back, He's coming to give rewards. Somebody say amen. And I'm hoping that you'll be ready for yours. And finally, in Daniel 10 to 12, the last three chapters, it goes over the same time, brought the same timeline again. And this time, uh, God gives us final words of victory. The highlight of these passages in Daniel 12 we see Jesus standing up yes. to give deliverance to his people. Mm -hmm. And I say thank God today for the blessed hope. We know where we're going. Somebody say amen. Yes. We know how this world will end. We are not here guessing. We understand that when my Jesus comes back, he is coming back. I mean to bring rewards for his children. The Bible tells us eyes have not seen. The Bible says ears have not heard. Neither have they entered into the hearts of mankind the things that my God has prepared for us. For his children. For those who love him. For those who receive the seed of God and not the mark of the beast. I understand my brothers and sisters tonight. Huh? This is time for holy living. Amen. If you love the Lord. If you want to be saved, you can't not be in the church right now playing games. True. You can't be in the church just doing politics. Mm. You can't be in the church just going around the mill and, you know, doing a dry run. Man, you got to be here with a passion. Yes. 
Amen. You're going to be here with the desire to understand yes. the love of God. You're going to be here with the desire, daily asking God um, for the baptism of His Holy Spirit. You're going to spend, all of us, you know, we got to whether you be the pastor, the deacon, the elder, or just a quiet member in the pew. Our responsibility for ourselves at this time is serious. True. When we need brothers and sisters, Christian friends, to spend more quality time with our Lord. Yes. Studying his word because his word is our only safeguard. Yes. If your family altar is broken down tonight, I am telling you, my brother, I'm telling you, dad, I'm telling you, daddy, I'm telling you, husband, I'm saying to every wife and to every child, restore that family altar. Don't yes. just come to church and keep play church. Make sure that you have a church at home. Are we still together here? These are important matters for yes. us. If you're not studying your Sabbath school lesson, huh, make sure that you devote some quality time and study the word. Yes. Because the lesson this court is really important. It's helping us to understand the, word. the importance of the Bible mm -hmm. and why we need to study. Mm -hmm. If you are curious with your church attendance, you know, thank God when these houses of worship open again, my heart gets a little concerned when I go to church on Wednesday nights and see the place so empty. Huh? I believe that if there was a time we have to pray, it is now. Yes. Come on, say. Mm -hmm. So to sum up this little introduction, all I'm saying to you this evening, to myself, to my wife, to all those I love, this is time for holy living. Mm -hmm. This is time for Pentecost. This is time, my friends, to love God with all that we've got mm -hmm. and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if you have and any kind of thing that brings you in conflict with people and you need to forgive, this is time to forgive. Somebody yes. say amen. This is time to heal. Mm -hmm. This is time to love. This is time to be ready for translation mm -hmm. because... As the Bible declares, in the days of these kings, Jesus has promised to set up his kingdom. It's going to be an everlasting kingdom. No more sickness. No more pandemics. No more of any of the things that now annoy. But there's going to be peace and joy and health and happiness. What a joy. I read in a Sabbath school lesson last week that, that, that there are not a hundred worlds that we have not yet fully understand about. There are things to see, things to do. Let's be faithful. Let's be safe. Let's be saved. It's my humble prayer for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We want to thank Pastor Beckles for that inspiring message accomplished by his wife, Sister Beckles, it letting us know despite what is going on all around us, that God is still in control. Sister Andrea, we have our closing song. Can you, you can hear me, Sister Margaret? Oh, yes, I can, dear. Oh, okay. Okay. Our closing song is number 524. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the said the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him all. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, 
just to trust his cleansing blood just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood jesus jesus how i trust it how i prove them all i know jesus jesus precious jesus of our grace to trust him all. Yes, this sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him all. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, Precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that thou art with me, will be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him Amen. 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 Let us have our closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the message. It was heartwarming. It is telling us to be strong and dare to be a Daniel standing strong for Jesus. We want to grant you... We want to ask you to grant us that productive and protective week and a restful night. In Jesus' name, amen.